Who is D.B. Cooper or Dan Cooper? The question has persisted since November 24, 1971, a man wearing a suit, sunglasses and carrying a briefcase purchased a coach ticket on a Northwest Airlines Flight 305 a Boeing 727 from Portland to Seattle, Washington, Oregon. He paid for the ticket in cash and claimed his name was Dan Cooper. Cooper took a seat in the rear of the plane, in his seat, he ordered a drink paying for it and lit a cigarette after ordering cabin crew member Florence Schaffner a stewardess he handed over a note as stewardesses sometimes were slipped phone numbers by mail passengers. At one point Cooper quietly told Schaffner Miss, you better take a look at that note when she read he noted had the message saying, I have a bomb in my briefcase. I will use it if necessary. I want you to sit next to me. You are being hijacked. Sooner she sat near him, Cooper opened his carry-on briefcase to reveal sticks of dynamite, and ordered Schaffner to pass the note to the captain, but for her Cooper ordered not to spread alarm to the other crew members, acting casual and behaving as if nothing was out of the ordinary. The note also ordered the captain to divert the plane to Seattle, which the pilots did claiming mechanical failure. When the plane grounded in Seattle, then the plane was refueled. Upon receiving all of his ransom demands, the FBI provided the ransom money of $200,000, $1,188,567.84 in 2016, and four parachutes. After thoroughly documenting and photographing each parachutes were provided to the hijacker and Cooper then allowed the 36 passengers to leave the plane, all who remained on the plane were the pilot, co-pilot, the flight engineer and one flight attendant. Before ordering the captain to fly toward Mexico City at 200 miles per hour at an altitude of 10,000 feet. The hijacked airliner took off from Seattle at 7.40 p.m. as the plane traveled between Seattle and Reno. Flight attendant Mucklow observed the hijacker tying something to his body. When the flight was crossing Nevada by 8 p.m., the rear staircase indicator light came on in the cockpit as the rear staircase of the craft was being lowered manually from inside the aircraft. At 8.13 p.m. with two parachutes and ransom money in hand, over the Lewis River in southern Washington Dan Cooper jumped out of the back of the plane. While the passengers grumbled, they never suspected they were hijacked until being on terra firma when they were interrogated by the FBI, in the days following the hijacking the FBI began to investigate the crime. A search of the plane yielded very few clues but it was discovered that before jumping from the aircraft, Cooper had removed his tie. Schaefer gave the FBI details for a composite sketch, which is the only image of D.B. Cooper in existence. She described the hijacker as a white male in his 40s, between 5 feet 10 inches and 6 feet tall and weighing 12 and a half stones. The press dubbed this character D.B. Cooper, who was only known on the flight manifest as Dan Cooper. Many witnesses were questioned and on a hunch detectives questioned a Portland, Oregon man named D.B. Cooper. Anxious reporters put the man's name out as a person of interest and the name of D.B. Cooper has been attached to the hijacking and Dan Cooper ever since the crime was perpetrated. With help from the U.S. Air Force the FBI recreated the jump conditions of the jump and placed his a landing in the area around Ariel, Washington. The FBI with help from state and local law enforcement, force and the National Guard began to comb the woods in the area landing site of Dan Cooper. The searches, eyewitness questioning, of the numbered bills used to pay the ransom failed to yield any leads the hijacking of Flight 305 by Dan Cooper remains an open case. Except a plastic sign from a Boeing 727 and a parachute were discovered in the woods near the bailout area. In 1978, Deer Hunters near Castle Rock, discovered $5,800 of the ransom money, 290 bills, was found buried in the Columbia River near Vancouver, Washington over 20 miles the money was deteriorated and waterlogged but was still bundled in the original packing.
1980, the FBI received a new lead when eight-year-old boy Brian Ingram was having a picnic with his parents along the Columbia River when he found three bills, it was later determined they bore the serial numbers that matched the ransom money given to D.B. Cooper. Over $194,000 or 9,700 bills have never been recovered. In 2008 a piece of parachute found near Amboy, Washington, six miles from Lake Merwin, is believed to be one of the Dan Cooper used in his escape from the hijacked airplane. These items, the money, placard and parachute are the only been located in connection with the crime. The first and most obvious conclusion is that D.B. Cooper, whoever he was, did not survive the jump. The FBI considers this a possibility, we originally thought Cooper was an experienced jumper, perhaps even a paratrooper, says Special Agent Carr. We concluded after a few years this was simply not true. No. Experienced parachutist would have jumped in the pitch black night, in the rain, with a 200 mile an hour wind in his face, wearing loafers and a trench coat. It was simply too risky. He also missed that his reserve chute was only for training and had been sewn shut, something a skilled skydiver would have checked. And even if he made it to the ground alive, it was winter, and he was dressed for air travel, not forest survival. It's almost certain he had no accompanies waiting to meet him. For one thing, there would have been no way for anyone to track his location, his instructions to the pilot were just fly to Mexico, and he jumped at a random location with zero ground visibility, according to Carr. What's more, as many agents before him, Carr thinks it highly unlikely that Cooper survived the jump. Diving into the wilderness without a plan, without the right equipment, in such terrible conditions, he probably never even got his chute open. However, his body and the parachute he used, have never been found. The tie left behind, and the money found in 1980. Source, FBI. Gov. In 2007, Jeffrey Gray's New York Magazine article, Unmasking D.B. Cooper, and subsequent book, Skyjack, The Hunt for D.B. Cooper, offered an in-depth look at the case. He was the first reporter given access to the FBI's Cooper case files, so his perspective is unusually detailed. A New York private detective who was contacted by an elderly man, Lyle Christiansen, who had become convinced that his late brother Kenneth Christiansen was Cooper, author Gray showed Kenneth's photo to the only hijack witness who's still alive, a woman who'd been a flight attendant that November night, and she acknowledged the resemblance, with reservations. Most intriguingly, there was this, as Gray writes, on his deathbed, Lyle remembers, his older brother pulled him close. He then said something that didn't make sense to him. Then. It does so now. Kenny said, there is something you should know, but I cannot tell you. Source, FBI. Gov. In 2011, a woman named Marla Cooper publicly suggested her late uncle, Lynn Doyle Cooper, or LD, was D.B. Cooper. Her mother, Grace Haley, was LD's sister. I've always had a gut feeling it was LD, Haley told ABC News. I think it was more what I didn't know is what made me suspicious than what I did know, because whenever the topic came up it immediately got cut off again. Marla Cooper gave the FBI a guitar strap that LD left behind, but it was found not conducive to lifting fingerprints. DNA evidence taken from the sample pulled from the hijacker's tie, assumed to be from the elusive Cooper, but a matter of some contention, more on that below, did not match LD's DNA. However, according to CNN, despite the failed link, the new suspect has not been ruled out. As a suspect, FBI Special Agent Frederick Gutt said, To date, this is the only unsolved skyjacking in the history of aviation. This case first aired on the October 12, 1988 episode. It was also profiled on Brad Meltzer's Decoded on the History Channel, and Unsolved History on the Discovery Channel. It also inspired the movies The Pursuit of D.B. Cooper, 1981, with Treat Williams and Without a Paddle, 
2004, with Seth Green and Matthew Lillard and influenced an episode of the TV series, Leverage.